<laughs> so yeah, my name is TJ Gomez. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with this basic training. For those of you that don't know me, I'm going to cover presenting a little later on. And part of presenting is your ID, your story. So that's what I'll tell you guys about myself. Is that okay? Cool. Yes. Okay, let's get right to it. Before all of this, let's do some administrative stuff, okay? There's just some stuff you got to take care of before we actually get going, okay? This is like setting up your office, right. getting your bearings. So first point, add to cell phone. USANA Distributor Services number, okay? 801-954-7200. That's not your upline's number. It's not my KS's number. It's USANA's number. That's very important because you want to be self-sufficient in this business. You don't want to be relying. I mean, you're open to check your upline and your, your team. But wouldn't it be easier if you found the answers out yourself? Yes. Yes. Because if you have a team of, let's just say, 50 to 100 people, do you want 50 to 100 calls asking basic questions? Right? And I'm talking about basic questions, like how many points is the fish oil? Right? Or how much is this product? Or how many, how many pills is in the health pack? Right? Those are answers you can find on your own, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, log into USANA today, or the hub is, is what it's called now, right? Yeah. How many people have a Facebook or Instagram? How often would you say you, you visit those <laughs> social media pages? Pretty often. <laughs> right? Every hour. Every hour, right? Log on to your USANA website as much as you do your social media. Get familiarized with it. There's so many tools there. PDFs, prospecting tools, income charts, the packages. I want to highlight Ask the Scientists. Okay, USANA provides a really useful tool here. So anything technical, product related, if you don't know the answer and it's a little bit too complicated, chances are I probably won't know it either, <laughs> right? Because people say, I need training on the product. I need training on the product. I mean, it's not really necessary because the way we move product here is sharing your experience with it, yep. not the facts on the label. But if you do want to know the facts on the label and any interactions with, you know, can a, can a pregnant mother do the reset, go and ask the scientist. Okay, and you type in your keyword and it'll pull up There's the results and you just read from there. Cool thing is, you can just take a screenshot of that page of that article and send it to your skeptical customer. Right. It's very credible that way because it's not really coming from you, it's coming from scientists. Right. Another thing I want to add is that if you search something and it's not there, you can email you sign a scientist directly and they'll answer your question within a couple days. Okay? Yep. So no more how many points is the fish roll. <laughs> <laughs> Set up your business, establish your website. So I lagged on this for such a long time. You know when you log off your business and then it goes to your personal website? And the picture the default is a girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? Yes. Uh -huh. So for a, for the longest time, my website was the girl. And I'm like, that's not me, right? <laughs> so minimum, put your own professional picture on your website. And think of a cool name. True Hawk with TJG. Okay. Uh, business email account. Oh, direct deposit. You guys want to get paid, right? Yes. Okay, so set up direct deposit. Um, Get connected, GSA, we have Team West, so on and so forth. Okay, so just admit some administrative stuff. Please handle all this stuff so we can get to the meat and potatoes. All right? Yeah, all right. You guys cool? Yes. Yeah. Hold on one second. All right. So my sister kind of alluded to this already in her introduction, but basically there's a formula everyone here needs to remember. And this is it right here, okay? So a half dozen things equals 80% of the difference. Okay? Yep. What does that mean? If you want to get good at something, like my sister said, there's not a thousand things you need to learn. It's usually about a half dozen. Usually, right? These half dozen things are called basics or fundamentals. And there's basics and fundamentals to everything in life. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at one example here. Let's just look at basketball because I like basketball. I like to play basketball. 
So if you want to learn how to play basketball, let me encourage you real quick. You don't need to learn a thousand things. You need to learn about a half dozen. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Around there. So what are the fundamentals of basketball? Dribble, pass, shoot, rebound, right? That's about five, six. It's a half dozen. And that's going to make up 80% of how you perform, right? All we see is this guy, right, <laughs> taking off from the free throw line. <laughs> and you say to yourself, I want to be like Mike. I want to be like that guy. But how does he get there? This is not what he practices. <laughs> okay? He gets good at mastering the basics, right? And in a professional level of sport, when everyone's athletic, athleticism doesn't make the difference. It's right. the fundamentals that will right. make the difference. I'll take someone with basic fundamental knowledge and athleticism versus someone with just athleticism. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is all we see on TV, but you don't see the hours of training he put, right. just passing, just dribbling, right? And some of the stuff that we, we're gonna go over, it might be a little mundane, might be a little weird, <laughs> But the basics, sometimes they're not that flashy. You just got to, it's, it's nitty gritty. You just got to get, got to get to it. Okay. So this is what we see, but what we don't see is the hours of basics that you practice. Okay. So let's get right to it. What are the basics in USANA? Now that we know the basics in basketball, what are the basics in USANA? So here's a list. Okay. There's different lists, but these are the ones I'm going to talk about. Okay. You don't have to write this whole list down because I'm going to go over it one by one. But the first one is the why. Always. This is this is always the first one. Yes. It's the most important. So what is this? Why are you doing this business, right? A why is basically a smart goal. Okay? So S is specific. Right? You want to specify what you want. Who's seen the notebook? <laughs> 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 when you ask your girl what she wants to eat, what do you want? <laughs> it's not that simple. <laughs> you guys remember that yeah. <laughs> Who can relate to that when you're trying to figure out what you want to eat? <laughs> right? But you can't. <laughs> Specify it. Be specific. What kind of food? What kind of car? Don't just say car. The more specific it is, the more real it is, the more you can see it, the more likely it's going to happen. So specify, what color? How do you want the interior? What kind of neighborhood? Okay. So M stands for measurable. So next to measurable, just put a dollar sign. Okay. You gotta know how much. If you don't know how much, you're picking at straws here. If you know exactly how much it's going to cost you, right? And let's get even further, like down payment, what percentage? Monthly payment? Now you can adjust. How much do I need to make a month to afford that? So measurability is very important. How much is it going to take for that suit, for those shoes? All right? Can you write that down? So A is attainable. So I want to make a million dollars next week. It's not that it's not very attainable. Is it possible? I don't know. But is it attainable? That's the question. So R and T are kind of hand in hand because unless you do, if you don't have a deadline, you're just wishfully thinking. And that's what timeline means. Is put a deadline to your goal. That gives it some urgency. Right? So timeline is very important. I want this by my birthday. Right? So Readjustability is just sometimes things don't go your way, so make sure you have a, a room to adjust right, and learn from your mistakes. So have short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. Don't just have long-term goals. I know we say, I want to retire, I, wanna, I want this, but Michael uses the example of schooling, of what if you never got grades in your four years of high school? <laughs> right? What if they report card, you guys remember? Mm -hmm. Then you're just doing work and you don't see the result. You need to have like a, 
a midterm and see what you got on that midterm to gauge where you're at. Right. Right. And then the key is obviously to write them down. Right. And I'm going to use another example of. Okay. So why continued as told by Jim Rowe? I'm just going to give you guys some perspective to maybe get you going. Okay. So if you don't have goals, this is what can happen. It's easy to get trapped by economic necessity and settle for existence rather than substance. Man, that's, that's kind of a lot right there. Yeah. Meaning, have some goals. Have you ever met somebody with no goals? And if you don't have goals, it's okay. Start today. What is this saying? You have a choice, basically. To make a living or to design a life. Without goals, you're just making a living. Set some goals, now you're designing a life. Okay? If you had enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. True. That's pretty self-explanatory. I found this very interesting, as told by Jim Rohn. You've got plenty of intelligence, plenty of talent, ability. Probably what you lack is plenty of reasons. And it's funny, reasons come first, answers come second. Now, here's the example I want to bring up, again, with schooling. Michael uses the, to see somebody who's super motivated and super laser focused, he uses the parallel of someone who really has to go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> when you have to go bathroom, meaning like, oh man, I don't know if I can make it, I think I'm gonna <laughs> soil myself. <laughs> what are you thinking of in that moment? I need to use the restroom. But I like to use this example because I know everyone can relate to this. In school, if a, if prof if, if a professor says you needed to do this 10-page paper and it's due in two weeks, all of a sudden you have a lot of reasons, especially when it's that last day and you haven't started. <laughs> you have all these reasons. You don't want to get a failing grade. You want to get a good grade, right? You don't get behind. How many of you have ever taken a class, taken a class where the professor says there's no due dates, you can just turn stuff in whatever you want? Has anybody ever had that? A couple? Dude, I had a professor like that and I died. <laughs> I turned everything the last day. Okay? So what is my point with this? Putting that pressure on yourself and having those reasons gets you going really fast. Here's another example. In USANA, what is one thing everybody has in common when you're new, right? That thing is in two months, you have the option to hit platinum pay setter. You guys following me? Yes. If you don't know what that is, ask, ask your sponsor. But platinum pay setter, who remembers their platinum run, right? Or trying for their platinum run. You kind of just do it, right? Isn't that true? You don't even ask, you don't even think. All you know is I need, Four people and 1,600 points. It's almost like this again, where my paper is due, so I just got to do it. You don't ask why. You just do it. So after the platinum run, then what? You don't have a reason anymore. Make a reason. Make one for yourself. What, what commission level, what rank advancement? Set a deadline. Okay? So to get this even further, the, the why. Your reasons. I have two questions for you. Okay. Before I ask these two questions, let me ask another one to preface it. Why aren't you where you want to be? Why? You're here. I know you're not where you want to be because you're here. Okay. So here's two questions to maybe let's let's straighten things out a little bit. Let's get to the bottom of this. What's got you turned on? And what's got you turned off? Man, let's get aligned with ourselves here. Let's be truthful. Let's be honest. You're not talking to people. Why? There's something there. Or something here. Something external or internal. Let's go 
go through it. So it's got you turned up. Is this some family? And that's cool. Family can be powerful. Yep. I need to make $250,000 minimum to take my family to wherever I want to take them. That's powerful. Financial, that's okay too. Okay. The point of this slide is I'm here to tell you today because there's a lot of trading on why and, you know, make it, it has to move you to tears. That's all true. But I'm here to tell you that it's okay if it doesn't. It's okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go deeper into that. Nitty gritty, Jermyl talks about this. How a girl knock on his door selling Girl Scout cookies. They're $2. Would you like to buy? And he says, I already bought some. He lied. But the truth was he was broke and he didn't have $2 to buy Girl Scout cookies. And that was a nitty gritty reason for him to always carry heavy on his, in his wallet. See, it could be something like that. I'm here to tell you that that's okay. Let's talk about personal reasons. What turns you on personally? Are you competitive? Are you a fierce winner? That's okay. Just admit it. So you can be truthful with yourself and so that you're aligned. Do you like recognition? Come on, man. If you do, just say it. Do you like to feel that you have high influence in a group of people? It's okay. Just admit it. So then maybe people will understand you more. Right? What other personal reasons are there? Um, I think that does it. I mean, see, see how I'm kind of going around here? Like, I'm trying to catch you guys. Let's find it. What's got you turned off? Maybe we have to change that to who? Right? Maybe it's a friend who's pulling you down. Maybe it's a relationship that's not really helping you grow. Maybe it's a negative family member that's just passing you too much. Sometimes you just got to limit that association so you can get to the next level. Because you're here right now because something isn't changing. Because if you could have everything you wanted being exactly who you are, then you should have it already. Right? All right, let's talk about personal reasons of what's got you turned off. Let's get personal here. Are you lazy? I'm kind of lazy. I'll admit it. I won't. <laughs> and the reason why I'm going to say this right here is to be transparent with you guys. Because who was at convention? Right? And if you were at our house, we do our aha moments. And you hear these things you never heard of before. Like, what? That's your deepest, darkest secret. Why, aren't you, why are you saying this now and not earlier? There's something about transparency at convention. When you see people admitting and saying things you're not saying, and they're making it happen. But you're not being honest with yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> Maybe this can be the transparency that will get you guys. And you don't have to shout it out. Just say it to yourself. How's your self-image? Maybe that's what's turning you off. What does your self-image look like? Do you see yourself in the mirror and say, it's time to go beast mode? Or, I look like a beast. <laughs> <laughs> no, this stuff is important. Personal. What other personal reasons are there for turning you off? How about the big E? How about that ego? That can rob you, man. Set it aside. Humble yourself. If you don't lower yourself, you can't receive the information. Okay, so if we can answer this question, these questions right here and get down to the bottom of why it's not working, let's answer these and let's find a way to, to fix it, to change it, to make it better. And it's a process. Let's answer this. And then let's come up with some of this, a lot of these. OK? All right. Cool? Yes. All right, that was the why. <laughs> That's number one, right? <laughs> All right, number two. This is more practical. So your list. 
Here are just some highlights of the list. Don't prejudge. Who are you to say no for somebody? You're no one. You don't know what they what they need. You don't know what's going on in their life. Oh, they they don't need this. They won't like this. They won't need this business because it's da 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 da. You can't decide for people. What is that? You can't do that. <laughs> Make it an obligation to at least show everybody once. And if you don't show everyone, at least write them down anyways, because you have the intention of at least talking to them. So when creating your list, you don't want to prejudge. But at the same time, there are certain qualities to look for in a person to partner up with in Yisana. Okay. Now, the two that I like to highlight are desire and being teachable. Those are the two most important qualities to have, right? Because desire is kind of hard to teach. You either have it or you don't have it yet. And teachability. My sisters talked about it. Right? If it's working for someone, why change it? Why? Okay. Have them written down and always add to your list. Okay. So the list continues. So adding to your list, right? For cold marketing, compliment, connect, contact. Sometimes, what if you don't get the contact? At least practice complimenting people and connecting with people. Start. Right? How about some form for your warm markets? Right? People say, how do I talk about Yusana? How do I bring up Yusana? You don't talk about Yusana, you talk about them. How's the family doing? Or how's the boyfriend or the girlfriend doing? How's work? Right? And you don't always want to ask the same questions. You want to kind of make it more thought-provoking. Like for, for recreation, what do I like to do for fun? Here's a thought-provoking one. If time and money weren't an issue, what would you be doing right now? That's a good question. And then message, how, how can you provide that? Right? So you got to be smooth with it. Don't just be like, hey, how's your family occupation and recreation? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, talk about it. Listen. You don't have to go in order. See, these things, you already know how to do it. Right? Because there's four steps. There's unconscious, incompetent. No, there's conscious, incompetent. That means you know, wait. Let me start over. <laughs> Un unconscious incompetence. You don't know that you're messing up. Let's identify where you're messing up. That's why Arbel says listen, right? Ask questions. And then there's conscious incompetence. Now you know where you're messing up. You can notice it, like, ah. Oh. Right? Now we get better and we get better. And then third step is conscious competence. You see that you're doing it right now. And then the last step is unconscious competence. It's, it's a reflex to you now. You don't even think about it. And I believe everybody here is unconsciously competent at form already. It's just applying it to the business. Don't. Don't change who you are. Don't get all weird. <laughs> okay? So adding to your list, um, cold marketing is a different beast. But let's talk about this. What do you love to do? And where do you feel most at your element? Maybe let's start there as far as adding to your list. What do I mean by that? For me, I love to play basketball. And when I'm on the court, I don't get intimidated by anybody no matter how good they are. Where do you feel like that? And add to your list in that realm. Maybe you can't do this yet to somebody you don't know. 
but you can do this, you're already doing this. Now let's just apply how to add to your list. Everybody has one of these, right? So when you're here and you feel, I know what I'm doing and I'm comfortable, how hard is it to do this? So how hard is it to do this? And let me, let me talk about myself so you guys can relate. How hard do you think it is for me on the basketball court to say to someone, hey, you're really good. Let's play again. What's your number? All right? Do you see how the keypad is already on? Yeah. I'm not asking. You didn't see that? Yeah. Put the keypad on already. They're going to take it and they're going to do this. That's how you add to your list. That's how you start. It's so practical. So what do you love to do? Go do it and meet the people there. Because that's where you feel most comfortable, right? Yeah. It's so easy. How many times have you done your hobby that you love? And you connected with someone there. How many times? Yeah. And you, how many times did you forget to get their, their number? And this is not this has nothing to do with you, Sana. You're just expanding your list. <laughs> okay. So when considering your list, as you expand it and as you meet new people, you want to learn more about them and what type of person they are. Right? And how we identify them in USANA is called the four fish. I guess you can call it personality types. So the main takeaway point with the four fish is you need to speak people's language. So let's start with the sharks. Next to the sharks, just put a dollar sign. They're money motivated, highly competitive. They're go-getters. You guys know any sharks? Yes. Dolphins? Just put a smiley face. They like to have fun. They're social. Whales? Just put a heart. They love to help others. They're very caring. Oh, and then these guys. <laughs> Those urchins. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> Urchins are just, they're very skeptical and they're driven by facts, knowledge, numbers. You get it. Okay, so what's the importance of all this? So, when bringing up the business, again, speak their language. What if someone's a whale, dude, and you're just talking about all money? You're going to turn them off real fast. Okay. What if they're a whale? You speak their lingo. Maybe start by saying, I need your help. See, that's a key word for whales. Yeah. Help? Okay, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come support me. Those are whales right there. And cater your, your invitations as well. And we're going to talk about invites. But to the Children's Hunger Fund event that Javain is, is leading, bring the whales over there. And that's the way to network and connect. Right? What about the dolphins? Let's let's hang out. Let's let's go eat. Let's let's do something social. That'll attract them really easy. And it's, it's a nice low impact introduction to what we do. Right. Okay. I don't want to talk about urchins. Because <laughs> everyone thinks they're an urchin too. Right? <laughs> All of a sudden they become a nutritionist. <laughs> okay, we're done with the list. We're done with the list. Let's talk about inviting. Inviting to me is, it's very flexible, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm here to just give you guys some guidelines, okay? One thing you should know is there is no such thing as the perfect invite. And even if you do do a perfect invite, they still might say no, okay? So what is inviting? Basically, you get people to review a tool, like a newspaper, a, a video, Right? Or you get people to come to an event. All right? So before I talk about inviting, you need to understand the looking zone. You need to. Because as I just stated, you can do the perfect invite and someone will still say no. And you need to be aware of the looking zone. Don't say, ah, I'm inviting all these people and 
I keep getting so many no's. So here's the looking zone. You see these three bars right here? This is timing. And this middle line here is perfect timing. If they're here, maybe they just, just got laid off. Like it's still fresh, right? Maybe right there you're still devastated. But you know, you get some time to heal, and then now you're looking, boom. You can have the worst invite ever, but if the timing is perfect, they'll still look. How about here? I like to talk about this in this way. Maybe they just started in a, a new relationship, right? It's true. That's what, that's, that's what their focus is on. Yes. Or they just got a new promotion at their job. Or a gen, a gen Y just started college. Timing, they, they might not be here. But they're here because it's like, oh, I have so much opportunity, so many possibilities, right? So get good at identifying these people where the dots intertwine with the right timing. Then do the invite from there. But you invite regardless, and there's a mindset to inviting. Straight out of Eric Worre, GoPro. Number one, emotionally detach yourself from the outcome. Okay? So after that, just put be task driven, not results driven. We can't. We can't control results, right? We can't control yes or no, we can't. But we can control the task, like how many people will I talk to? You see the, the perspective shift? Yeah. Not, I need five no's versus I need to make five calls. You guys see the difference there? So just detach yourself from it. It'll be more natural. You'll, it seem, it'll seem like less you're trying to, quote unquote, get them. Right? I need to get this person. All we're doing here is sharing information. Right? Just share the information. Focus on that. Number two is be yourself. And I'm going to show you guys some examples, okay? Like, if you normally call that guy bro and use, you know what I mean? You want to be more professional, obviously, but still be yourself, like my sister said, add your flavor, okay? Bring some passion and enthusiasm. So important. So I-A-S-M are the last letters of enthusiasm. It means I am sold myself. Man, if, if you're trying to show someone this business and you're not sold yourself, they're going to they're gonna smell that from a mile away. Like, are you even sure about this? Mm -hmm. Are you even committed? And are you even serious about this? And they won't even ask you. They'll just see, see it. Right. right? I like to talk about youngsters, too. Because if we talk to youngsters and they say, I got to go talk to my parents. Right? This is more towards objections now. But I say, if we're going to go talk to your parents, you have to be in. I want it to be two on two. Me and you versus them, not three on one where I'm still kind of convincing you. It doesn't work. So passion, be excited. Okay. And then four is posture. Okay. Just have some posture. You have something of value to offer here. Act like it. Talk like it. Let me give you guys some approaches. Again, straight out of Eric Worre. So Eric Worre, GoPro. So number one, direct approach. You gotta know their hot button if you wanna do a direct approach. Actually, knowing the hot button for all these approaches is useful, but you can't do direct if you don't know it. Their hot button. What is their hot button? What do they want? What are they looking for? So a direct approach is you addressing what they need right on the spot. Like, you know that they don't like their job, so you're offering them a solution to leave their job. Now, 
Second is the indirect approach or the feedback approach. All right? So this is like for whales too. Like I need your help. I need your opinion on this. Can, can you take a look? And then there's super indirect. Who do you know that would want to lose five pounds? You're kind of, you know, obviously when you approach them, you want to have them in mind still. Like maybe they need to lose five pounds, but hey, who do you know? Because psychologically, they're going to say, I do. Hmm. Right? Okay. Some tips on inviting. Say less to more. This skill is inviting, not presenting. We have presenters. Your job is just to invite. And when you invite someone to go to the movies, how fast is that invitation? It's like less than 10, ten seconds. <laughs> hey, you want to go to the movies? Boom, that's your invite. <laughs> right? You don't need to overwhelm with all this use, like unnecessary information. You want to talk about the destination, not the vehicle. Again, gearing towards their hut. So it's not going to matter that it's USANA. Well, it will matter that it's USANA. But in the invitation, you're not going to talk about USANA. You're going to talk about their need, what they told you while you were using form on them, right? And here's the, the secret weapon right here is if I dot, 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 would you dot, dot, dot. <coughs> If I could show you a way to make extra income in five to ten hours a week, would you be open? All right? If I send you a link, would you watch it? Eric Worre explains this as it's it's reciprocal. You're doing something and they're doing something. So it's just something psychological. Bottom line is you need to get good at putting people in front of other people. Okay? Because when somebody's being invited to a presentation, they think, what's in it for me? How, how, how can I benefit from this? Right? So if it's not, if we don't want to talk about USANA directly because we're gonna, it's covered in the presentation, talk about someone else. So that when they come here, they have purpose. Oh, I'm here to meet Caesar because I'm similar to him and he's doing this. So edification is simply this, raising influence on something or someone. Okay? So when you edify, always use the four fish as well. Because as entrepreneurs, we need to be well-rounded. So this person... This person, Abby, is highly successful in, in this business, right? She's very caring. See how I'm hitting all four fish? She loves to have fun. And any questions you have, she'll answer it for you, right? She knows this like the back of her hand. Now they're thinking, Abby, Abby, not Yusana, Yusana. Get, get good at bringing people in front of other people. Does that make sense? And set the appointment in stone. To do that, I give people always two options. Okay? Never say, when are you free? Or when can you? Because two options will never fail. In a test, if your options are true or false, are you going to pick a third or between those two? Truels. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're going to pick true or false. So if I ask you, are you free weekdays or weekends? You're going to say weekday or weekends. Right? And then, are you free weekdays or weekends? Week. Weekdays? Okay. So Monday or Wednesday? Monday. Monday? Okay. Afternoon or evening? For afternoon. For afternoon. Okay. We just set it in stone there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not when are you free? Right. If you if you send a link, 
Should I follow up with you in 10 minutes or a later time? I know Eric Worre says, have them said it. You know, it's a, it's a good long process, but I, this is what I use personally. You can, you know, it's worked for me, but yeah. So can I call you in 15 minutes or a later time? 15 minutes or, or a later time because I'm doing this right now. Okay. All right. Some inviting examples. Yo, Cody, how's everything? Was wondering if you could do me a quick favor. You have 10 minutes to spare. See, I'm still myself. So this is an example of a message or text feedback approach. You guys with me? So indirect approach slash feedback approach. Working on a business project, I'm looking for some constructive feedback from someone who is friendly. It also helps you're a former slash current athlete. So let me pause right there. When you're inviting, always compliment them and make them feel good. If you compliment someone, chances are they won't act negatively towards you. Does that make sense? Yes. Here's the if I would you. If I send you a 10 minute video, would you watch it? Yeah, I'll for sure watch it. Sounds good, brother. Thanks, I appreciate it. When's a good time to follow up? In like 15 minutes or a little later? Yeah, no problem, bro. I'm watching it right now. Sounds good. Just finish. I thought it was, a, I didn't even ask him anything. I thought it was a solid presentation. Get over to the company. And then we're going to talk about closing. So what did you like best about what you saw? Antioxidants, nutrition, 20,000 20, calories. I thought that was cool. How you can customize according to your nutritional needs. So that's just an invite example. We're not talking about closing yet. Okay. Here's a direct approach. If you know their hot button. Direct approach through message. So we're obviously we're talking, right? You want to build a relationship, establish the relationship as well. Life is in transition right now, my brother. Figuring out what's next. I think it's time for me to see the world. Get out of Cali for a few few years. Right there, I was just like, okay. I already knew. His, I didn't even ask. He told me. Again, I just got back from Mexico. I might leave for Atlanta for a couple weeks. So I'm talking about what he likes. I'm not talking about Isana. I'm talking about what he likes. His hot button. And here's some more for me. Working? Working? Do yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I quit my job in November. Boom. Now I know he's jobless. He might need some income. Been living off savings and jobs that pay to the table. Figuring out what career path to take next. Here's the invitation. Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> if I can show, if I would you, right? Right. If I can show you a way to be able to take work with you when you travel, would you be interested? Nice. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds unreal, man. Would love to hear the details. Let's meet up this week. We'd love to share it. Does Monday or Tuesday sound good? Two choices. I'm setting it in stone now. Awesome. Monday is perfect. We have a, we have an office in Pomona. I want you to meet my friend Mike. Now I'm edifying. Thanks. I want you to meet my friend Michael and my sister who I work with as well. And obviously in the later conversation, I'm talking about how Michael always travels. That's edifying now. Be in touch. I'll hit you up Monday. Perfect. <laughs> and that's just the invite. No matter if they said yes or no to the business, just have that invitation down. Get good at putting people in front of other people. Then from there, it's their choice time. It's not your choice. But at least get the invitation skill up. Get your skills up. All right, number four is following up. You guys doing okay? Yes. <laughs> So following up, the fortune is in the follow up. Fortune. <laughs> That's enough for following up. Okay, the fortune is in the follow up. But let's go even deeper. No one will follow up except you. It's very rarely it happens. Will someone call you and say, 
hey, I need to make money. Can I see you, Sana? <laughs> <laughs> or, hey, I need to lose five pounds. I mean, that happens, yeah. but very rarely, right? Yeah. Or, hey, do you remember how I said I was thinking about it? <laughs> I thought about it. Let's talk. <laughs> it doesn't happen, guys and gals. So follow up, okay? Right here. So if you make the invite and you see them, that's one exposure. According to Eric Worre, it takes an average four to six exposures for someone to buy or join. So your goal shouldn't be, I need to get them to see the presentation. Your goal should be, I need to expose them to what I'm doing four or six times. Think about that perspective. Because if you just do like four to six exposures, that's when 80% of the, the sales happen. If you just do, if you even hit them up only three times, you're in that 20% bracket. That's, that's a gamble. If you want to go to the 80% bracket, talk to them four to six times. You go up to your, your sponsor and say, ah, they said no. That's just once. You know? Make it a goal to expose them more often. And here's, key, here's a key point. Never leave an exposure without setting up the next exposure. So after the presentation, all right, I'll be in touch. I'll follow up with you, right? <clears throat> so you want to follow up 24 to 48 hours when the information is still fresh. Because if you don't set up the next exposure, you're going to hit them up out of the blue. Does that make sense? And that's when someone feels like, ah, oh, I don't want to bother them. But if you set it up before you leave, it's professional. They're expecting your call or your message. Okay. All right. So here are some follow-up tips. So follow up with a tool geared towards their interest, toward their interest. They like the product, send them a booklet or a product video or a sample, right? Like the business, send them like an entrepreneur like video. Something that will conceptualize the business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Leverage or, you know, cash flow quadrant, right? Also, follow up with some good news. That's a good way to follow up. Hey, my new team member, they're a week old. They just made their first check. That's a good way to follow up too, right? What about your family? Hey, my my aunt just lost five pounds, right? That's a good way to follow up too. And this is key right here is follow up with some leverage. This is how you get people going. Sometimes they just need that extra, you know? Hey, I have two people ready to do the reset. Let's get you in before that so we can give you credit for that. You see, see what I mean by, by using that leverage? Or I just talked to someone and they're a name. I talked to you first, so let's get you in. You'll have your first team member in your organization. Okay? Is this helpful? Yes. All right, presenting. Let's talk about presenting real quick. And, you know, not everyone needs to present, but I hope everyone does present. Yeah. And knowing how to present will easily help you when it's hard to set the appointment because they're busy. What if they're busy Wednesday night, Thursday night? What if their only free time is a 30 minute lunch break? Just present real quick, 20 minutes, okay? So some mindset for presenting. You are not the message, only the messenger. That's kind of a lot right there. Darren Hardy talks about forget your credentials, forget where you came from, forget your background. Because the point of network marketing is anyone can do this. So if you're nervous about presenting, why? 
the stuff you are saying has literally been worked on, right? Developed by experts. So just deliver the message. Don't be so concerned about yourself. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm this. I'm that. Just share the message because you are not the message. Yeah. You're just the messenger. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So get that fear out of the way. Get that ego out of the way too. Just share the information. But what is unique is you, your story. That is the difference maker. So instead of being concerned with yourself as I am the message, maybe, for example, if you are an executive in a company prior to this, prior to USANA, and you're just like, yeah, you know, sharing USANA because you're using that, you know, am I... Am I losing anybody here? Okay. Don't talk about why you're. Don't talk about your credentials. Talk about why you're doing USANA. That's more pulling. And I'm not saying credentials don't. It, it can matter, but it shouldn't, right? It, credentials credentials shouldn't matter, because the point is anyone can do this, right? So develop that story. You don't have to say, I'm an executive, but you can say, I'm doing this because X, Y, Z. That's what's going to attract people. Is that clear? Yes. Be professional. When you're presenting, be professional. Yes. And it's, 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 it's a big deal when you're up here. Like it's, it's kind of a responsibility, right? So we want to be polished, don't we? Yes. Let's be polished. Let's be sharp. Um, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Have some posture when you're presenting. So body language, confidence, eye contact. Watch this. Be mindful of your mind. Be, be mindful of your hands and feet. Watch this. Don't don't do that. Like for this. Like I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> like right here. Okay? Girls. <laughs> no, seriously. What if there's a network marketing professional in the audience, man? We want to represent Team West, right? Yeah. Don't forget to smile. <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> Very important is know your audience. Especially in a one-on-one -on -one setting. In a one-on-one, -on -one, you can't be saying the same one. You have to cater it towards that person. It's it's intimate. Right? It might even be a lot of interaction. Right? I made that mistake of doing my one-on-ones just presenting the same way. Right? So know your audience. If you know they don't believe in supplements, let's talk about the the RDA. Let's talk about optimal levels. Right? Let's talk about depleted soils. If you know they think this kind of stuff is a pyramid, let's talk about Forbes. Let's talk about the comparison of corporate versus USANA structure. Spend some more time on that. Watch the clock. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We want to be respectful of people's time. <clears throat> so when I'm presenting, this happened when I was presenting with Fabian. I told him, I don't know if you guys were there. I'm like, Fabian, two to three minutes, five tops, your, your testimonial. And he went on for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we started late, 8.15. So 25 minutes were, were taken from me. So I had to do the presentation in 25, 30 minutes. All right, so be mindful of that. Right? This is now being professional. Okay? I know with West we have like a home environment friendly, but we want to be sharp too, right? Yes. Let's get to that next level. Okay, so presenting structure. Let me just outline let me outline the pr the presentation for you and show you how easy it is. ID is your story. 2 to 5 minutes tops. <clears throat> 
Your ID can't be 20 minutes. <laughs> and then ICP, industry company products, 20 minutes. This is the presentation, right? Isn't it cool to see it so simple like this? Maybe someone new will be like, oh, I can't present. It's so overwhelming. But this is all it is right here. Financial reality and comp plan, 10 to 15 minutes. What I, what I want to emphasize here is I like the fact that our presentation spends more time on the product. That's what se separates us from other network marketing companies, where maybe most of their presentation is 30, 40%, 30, 40 minutes of money. Just a side note. And then call to action. Call to action is the end of the presentation. We all remember that. The A, B, and C slide, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like two to five minutes as well. You want to, um, what's the word? You want to prevent the objections with a, with the B, B, B side, right? Yeah. I don't have money, I don't have time, I don't think I can do this. And, and then a take home message, if you please. Right? You want to put that cherry on top. You don't have to, right? So yeah, that's the presentation, guys. It's Simple when you look at it that way. And presenting continued. Let's just talk about the ID because I feel like that's probably the most important part. I talked about your story, right? Mm -hmm. You're unique. Maybe your previous experience with your job won't matter, but your story here does. That's what's going to pull people. So we need to develop that story. And this is all, your, this is how your story is structured where you were, what you saw, what you did about what you saw. And then where you are today or where you're headed. That's your story. Okay, and Jim Rohn always says it. Keep on sharing the story. Keep on sharing the story. We need to develop your story. Like, what? why are you here? Because, again, that's what attracts the people, not the presentation. Sometimes the presentation itself. Sometimes. Right? So key points on sharing your ID, okay? When you're sharing your story and telling everybody about yourself. Make people say me too, not so what. For example, I was a hardworking studious person in college. Okay, cool. But we want to connect with people on a deeper level. It's the psychological thing, once again. It's them being in agreement with you. Yes. It's them opening up because they're like this, and then, yeah, I agree. So saying that versus how many of you know someone who never studied in school but always got good grades? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people might even smile to that or like, oh, yeah, that's me, right? <laughs> you see, you're connecting with them at that point. You see the difference between the two? This, Michael, this is Michael Chaos. He always says this. And he always says, yeah, I hate you guys, right? Like, the people who always got I always had to study. So do you see the difference of re being really empowering during your story? Where your lines, people are, again, nodding, right? There's just a difference. Do you guys see the difference with these two? Yeah. So get good at asking questions. Instead of saying, you know, I was working 70 hours a week. That's, that's a good story, though, okay? Don't get me wrong. But let's get better. Let's get better. So I was working 70 hours a week. How about, instead of saying that, how about, how many of you consider yourselves as a hard worker? All right. But personally, at some point in my life, I felt like I was working hard, but not at the right thing. I felt the ceiling, I felt being undervalued. Do you guys see the difference? Yeah. You're pulling more in the second example versus just saying. Right. And people are gonna say, you work seven hours, okay, so what? You're, you're studious, okay, cool, good for you. You want, you want people to relate, okay? Yeah. All right, so how do you learn and get better at presenting? Attend weekly events? Watch online presentations. 
take notes. See, there's no excuse because it's all available for you. Why don't you why don't you know Dr. Runs the story by now? In the beginning, I wrote down USNA on my folder like so many times until I remembered. Like, what's USANA's ticker symbol? And if you don't know the answer to that, you better write it down every time you, you watch the presentation. Right? Like, what's, like, the, the compensation plan slides. Right? We can get better. All right. The faster you get the first one done, the better. Please, guys, don't take two years to do your first one. Present. Jeremy also says the first one was, you know, it's not going to be that good. It won't. Trust me. Right? But after you do that first presentation, and then your next presentation you go to, don't you take notes a little bit differently? Yes. Who here can agree with me on that? Who feels mm -hmm. me on that? Because now you know how it feels like to be up here. <laughs> and sometimes I take notes not even on the presentation but on what the speaker is saying, <laughs> the examples they're using, right? Okay. All right, this is number six, right? Presenting was number five, is that? Yes. Okay, so meeting, con uh, shoot. there you go, meeting conduct, number six. So meeting conduct, when I was making these slides last night, these seven bullet points, I was just, I wasn't even thinking anymore. Because meeting conduct is like this. This should never change. This is the most practical. Like, we need to follow this. Who here has ever presented here at the office versus in a different location where it's not as neutral, doesn't have that home court advantage? You feel the difference, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh shoot, that joke didn't really work, but it worked in the office. Why? Because here we have this, like everybody, right? But maybe in a home presentation where if you don't follow this in a home presentation, it's going to be rough, man. And the speaker is going to feel, you know, you're going to have a rough time. So as an associate, we need to follow this. Who loves the H and Fs here every Wednesday? Like, isn't that a, isn't it a great presentation? Yes. It's such a good environment. Like, right when you walk in, too, it's it's right because let's go over it. Number one is dress for success. Right. This business is about attraction. Right. Not being attractive, right? But <laughs> attracting people to your business. Like, if it were up to me, I would just wear basketball shorts all the time. But if you get clocked in football without a helmet, are you done? Do you think people who play football say, ask, oh, I don't know if I should wear a helmet or pads? Dude, that is what you need to wear if you want to play football. In this business, you, you got to dress for success, right? How about in the military? They tell you to, your hair has to be a certain way and you got to wear the uniform. Why, why, do you, why, why are you asking questions in this business? It's no different. Right. You're going to get clocked, like not wearing a football helmet. Mm -hmm. I hope I said that well. <laughs> Number two, be early. That's self-explanatory, right? Number three, pick up your guest. Number four, introduce your guest. OK? To similar individuals, if they're a student, introduce them to a student, right? Single mother, introduce them to a single mother. Again, putting people in front of people so that they feel relation and they feel that they're they're being more open. Because sometimes you're a little skeptical, right? Or whoever you're going to bring here is going to be skeptical. Some, some of them. But the more you're like, oh, hey, yeah, you know? All right. And if you can, introduce them to the speaker. So number five, set up front. I want to talk about six, is participation. 
especially in a location where you know it's it's new. So participation is key. Right. And you hear it. Who is this? Who says this? Absolutely. <laughs> Who says that? Alexis, right? <laughs> and some people might be like, why are they saying the same thing every presentation? <laughs> like, that's true, that's right. And I'm not saying you guys to always say it, but it helps the speaker, especially in a location, again, where it's not here. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And again, you, you don't really know how it feels until you're up here when it's the energy is low, right? That's right. <laughs> Energy is low and the environment is it's it's kind of awkward. You guys know what I'm talking about. Right? Yes, okay. yes. So I'm not saying to always you know chime in. And if you ever sit next to me during a presentation, when it's emergency, <laughs> I, I make a joke. And everyone and everyone kind of laughs around me. And I feel like it, the energy energy kind of goes up. I know my sister kind of thinks differently, like, oh, stop being distracted. But, <laughs> no, but sometimes you need it, like, and sometimes it wakes them up, like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in a 45 to an hour presentation, it's, it's kind of a lot. Sometimes you check out. That's why, you know. So, again, I'm not saying you to always, you know, right? Participating is being engaged, right. taking notes in your journal, right? Being engaged. Everybody do me a favor and lean back on your chair right now. Everybody. Who felt the, the environment change right now? Anybody? Did you guys feel that? It's just kind of chill and laid back. Now everybody kind of lean forward with your journal on your on your lap. Do you guys feel the difference? Yeah. See, it's all energy. Yeah. It's all energy. I hope that was a good example. I hope you guys felt the difference, okay? Yes. Um, try to use the restroom before the presentation, <laughs> please. Yes. Yes. Please try. I was at convention. Oh. Those sessions are like four hours, man, and I'm just like, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to use the restroom, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, imagine you're up here, and you see someone walk out. It's just like, oh, shit. Right? So it's all here. It's all, it all plays a role. Does that make sense? Yes. If you want to have a meeting like this one in the office that Team West hosts, try doing a meeting on your own and not following this. You, <laughs> then you'll understand the, tr the truth. Yeah. And what I'm saying is real. <laughs> okay, so closing. So when everyone says, uh, when the speaker says you're in A, B, or C, thank you very much for your time. Everybody claps, right? Mm -hmm. That's the end of the presentation. So let's talk about closing and then I'm done here. So closing. Your mindset for closing, okay? What is closing? Basically closing is when the presentation ends and you talk to your friend and ask them what they like, right? So your mindset, dude, it's business time. It is. Right. Closing is the skill, the direct skill that pays. Does that make sense? Without the closing, there's no, there's no income. So it's business time. It's time to posture up. A highlight of closing is all you, a great closer, all they do is ask the right questions. Why? Because you want to guide them to an informed decision. You're not twisting you know, their arm to join. You're not dragging them or forcing them, but you're just asking them questions because if we have to drag them across the starting line, will they ever make it to the finish line? Or if they willingly join because they want it to themselves, isn't that much better? Yeah. So sometimes you just gotta be like, it's probably not for you, but thank you for your time. You see that? Yeah. That's so, that goes such a long way in building that relationship, saying that. It's probably not for you, but thank you, right? <laughs> okay, do not ever <laughs> stand up right when the presentation ends. This is kind of tricky. 
again, to me, it's just all about energy. Mm-hmm. Unless they say, unless they're a hater, that's when I would stand up and say, let's get out of here. You know? <laughs> Do you guys get that? Yeah. Like, let's get out of here. Because there's people thinking and there's people closing. There's people discussing. <sighs> okay, I know we like to use that to close the side office. But I feel that we need to close in the field. It's more duplicatable. Not everyone has a side office. And I feel like sometimes maybe you want to go there because you don't want other people to hear you. I don't know if that's just me being crazy. but Because I'm only saying this because this is how I felt. Like When it comes to closing time, like, dude, I don't want Arbel to hear me. Like, what if I mess up? Like, <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying? But you need to learn it. It's business. Don't ever say, what do you think? That's the worst thing you can say. Can you just underline this? Because that's probably the worst closing question you can start with. When you ask, what do you think? It doesn't set you in a positive direction for closing. Don't ever not have applications. You have to have applications. If you're buying a car and the salesman doesn't have any paperwork for you, that's insulting. They're, they don't even want to, they're not taking, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you bring your friend and you don't have an app. What is that saying? Like, mm-hmm. Are you not trying to do business with that person? Mm-hmm. Are you just here to chat? Sometimes it's okay, some, some people just come for support. But have applications. Again, they're, they're on your website, log on your website as much as you do Facebook. Have packages available, okay? Whether it's on your tablet or your closing folder with all your forms, right? It just shows that you want to treat that person seriously. Like, imagine if you let's just say you were to bring Michael, and you knew he was a stud, would you do all this, right? Mm-hmm. But what's the difference between that person and a, and a different person? Mm-hmm. You want to treat everybody with excellence, right? So be prepared. All right, useful questions for closing. And we're, we're pretty much done here. Here's probably the best question you can ask right when the presentation ends. Okay? And you have like less than a second to start closing because if your guest stands up, again, like it's kind of over. Like the energy, right? You want to strike while iron's hot. So what did you like best about what you saw? Right? Or what are your highlights? Or what was your favorite part? See how it's different than what do you think? Because this is positive. They're going to say something that they like. Whether it's, I really like the speaker. Okay, after that, introduce them to the speaker again. Let's, let's, let's connect. I like the health part. I like this. I like but Whatever. Okay? Here's another good one. And these are not in sequence. These are just like tools in your bank that you can store. Okay? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being slightly interested and 10 being ready to get started, where would you rate yourself? That's a, that's a, you have, you have to have posture when you ask that one. Yes. And like I said, it's business time. Like, why would you not want to ask that? You don't want to waste their time. If there are two, there are two. Let's go. If there, you know what I mean? Don't be intimidated. Closing, when you, when closing becomes fun, you know, and again, same thing with inviting, just detach. Right. Detach yourself from the outcome. So I realize some of this training stuff is, it's again, it's basics. Sometimes basics aren't that fun in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? But you gotta master the basics. These are the basics right here. Here's another thought-provoking question, a good one to ask. With your current plan, is that bringing you to the lifestyle that you wanna have? I got this from Matt Chionis at convention. Pretty good question, right? Yes. And again, you're just guiding them to an informed decision. Don't answer for them. Listen to what they're saying. Right? Do you see a way how USANA can answer your health needs? Do you see a way how USANA can answer your financial needs? That's another opening question that, that gets them thinking. 
And here's one of my favorites. Were you in A, B, or C? Let's posture up. Come on, let's. We're the ones offering something great here. Right. Okay, project that. Third A, be quiet and fill out the application. If they say they're in A, just fill out the application. Don't say anything more. <laughs> okay? If they're B, now you, you want to do uh, objections. Refer to Michael K.S.'s objections DVD. He goes over everything. <laughs> like, I got to think about it, right? I got to pray. I'm just <laughs> got to pray on it. <laughs> no, but the objections DVD, it's, it's all you really need, and I can't do it better than Michael. What about the C? I want to spend time on the C. Okay? Don't be like, oh, you're a C. <laughs> hey, C's are good, guys. Can we all understand that C's are good? Are good? Yes, yes, yes. Okay? So what do we do with the C's? Which products caught your eye? That's a great question to ask to a C. Which, product, which products caught your eye? The business, they're going to say, the business isn't really for me, right? So, to continue on, again, asking the right questions. If someone's a C, their C stands for customer, what are your health goals? And then you listen. Listen. On a scale of 1 to 10, how committed are you to achieve those goals? Right? These are such good questions. Because now you're going somewhere with this. And then, of course, what are you currently doing right now to achieve those goals? So again, this is an indirect way for people to maybe realize either they're heading in the right direction or they're not moving or they're heading in the opposite direction. And you're not answering for them, but you're helping them realize and making them, helping them, guide them, make an informed decision. Right? If you were to answer these and you didn't like it personally, right? You'd want to Maybe you'd want to make a change versus try this, right? All right. So let's just say, are you an A, B, or C? I'm a C. Let's let's backtrack. Are you an A? What do you do when they're an A? Oh, yeah. B objections time. Okay. C. If they say. I'm a customer right here. Now if they say I don't like the customer, I don't like the products, and I don't want to do business. It's still okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's a good thing still. Because that person can lead you to the next person and to the next person and to the next person. That's right, right. Now it's time for referrals. Do you know someone who would be interested in improving their health? Oh not you, okay then do you know someone? It's all about the who do you? <laughs> who do you know? <laughs> it's all about that who do you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know someone who needs to improve their financial situation? Not you then. Okay, who? Do you? <laughs> Please don't skip this. Oh yeah, I do know someone. Alright, cool, thanks. <laughs> I've done it before when I say, can I have their number? Come on, let's go, it's business time. All right. Can you all agree that it's closing is business time? Yes. yes. Okay. So can you refer them to me? What's their Facebook? What's their number? You get it down. Don't just leave it at that. Say, hey, put in a good word for me. Right? Put in a good word for me. Like, if someone puts in a good word for you, then you already have that introduction. Right. Right? And how do you put in a good word for someone to say, hey, oh, so I just talked to Caesar and you know, he has this business. I'm not really interested, but I thought you'd be interested. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Almost done, guys. This might be my last slide. So, C. 
Sneeze are okay. We understand that, right? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> so can you refer them to me? They're going to say yes or no, or yeah, yeah, or I'll get to it. All right. Let's do the, ref now we talk about referral partnerships. Okay. So, fill out application anyway, question mark. So if they're a C, they don't want the product or the business, or they want one or the other, but they don't want to sign up, and you ask for referrals, so yeah, I think I can, I know some people who I can send your way. Oh yeah, my, my girlfriend might be interested in your health movement. Let's talk about the referral partnership. You say, awesome. Hey, we have something called a referral partnership where you don't have to worry about anything. All you need to do is refer me people, and you might make a check here and there. Let's, let's follow your application anyway, if you're going to send me referrals. And it's, this is when it's a question mark because they're already easy. Okay. So, referral partnerships, we can go into detail with, but you can ask your sponsor how those work. Basically, you sign them up as if they're an A, but they don't do anything except send you people and get their products at a discount, right? All right, that's pretty much the basic training manual. Um, thank you guys for your time. And I'm going to bring up uh, Abby and Arbel to, to close off. <laughs> <laughs>